when I say today needs to run like clockwork, it is 6.28 and the doors to the pool open at 6.30. So to say today is going well so far would be an understatement. <laughs> one I've had to pull over because I've managed to lose my right contact lens somehow so an on-the-fly changeover is required oh. stay safe out there folks air particles flying around taking out my contact lens no idea how that's happened. Hello everyone and welcome to another video and welcome to a day in my life as I prep for a double Ironman distance extreme triathlon, which is a bit of a mouthful, I must admit, but not as much of a mouthful as a 7.6 kilometer swim, a 360 kilometer bike, and an 84.4 kilometer run with a 42 hour cutoff. Sounds terrible, I know. And as it is so terrible, my life has become pretty antisocial as of late. So today is fairly jam packed and needs to run like clockwork for everything to happen in the order that I am planning on it doing so. So I'm gonna keep this in row short and sweet before I run you through what today is looking like, maybe on the train, depending on who's sitting next to me, or I'll do it when I arrive at my destination for the day so if you do enjoy the video at any stage do make sure to drop it a like do make sure to comment down below and do please make sure that you have hit subscribe i am training for a double extreme ironman distance triathlon in snowdonia so if you haven't yet hit subscribe you my friend are a horrible horrible person thank you and perhaps apologies but nonetheless i'm gonna head upstairs for session number one in the pool then i need to shower turn around and get to waverley which is sort of that direction for 8 a.m to get on a train down to newcastle to see my brother for the reasons that will become clear and i will catch up with you then so why not head upstairs for session number one of the day when i say today needs to run like clockwork it is 6.28 and the doors to the pool open at 6.30. So to say today is going well so far would be an understatement. So I need to be in and out really within 50 minutes and then walk up that way to Waverley. I hope you're feeling imaginative because as I said in my last video, filming in a swimming pool in the UK is about as hard as Charlie Sheen in his prime. So no swimming footage for you today, but if you really use your imagination, then you're probably thinking of Charlie Sheen as private, so you can just picture me swimming, which is just as good as a clip anyway, isn't it? So that's that's that, I guess. Back to the video.
Avengers here. I've run through what my day is going to look like on the train already, so you should be up to speed on that. I'm going to head over to meet Jamie now and see where we go from there, really. The plan is sketched out, so all should be quite simple. I hope you can hear me okay, by the way. Lots of background noise, but that is that. Swim complete, journey complete. Didn't want to talk too much on the train as I was surrounded by silver haired gentlemen who probably would not understand this generation's way of making a living, but nonetheless, let's go get one. Just walk past the few trebles bars, which are a fairly unique phenomenon within Newcastle. And having frequented several of them that I've just walked past in my university years whilst I was in the northeast, my skin has started to crawl a little bit. For those that don't know, Trebles bars serve triple measures of spirits with mixers, and they used to do three for seven pounds, which is an absurd insight into the reality of British drinking culture, I think. Okay, so just gone 10am and the brief today is to onboard Jamie to pick up short form editing of the podcast, get the modern mind uploaded in video format as well because I've just deprioritized that because of bandwidth. So he's going to take over the YouTube video uploading side of things for the podcast. I'm still going to look after the audio, but that means that we can get it out there on YouTube. People want to watch it on video. We can keep moving that forwards. But given the podcast is moving very much in the right direction, if you haven't engaged with it already, these are all the details here. But he's going to be handling the video, so all critiques can go this way. First and foremost, I need to provide him with the tools for the job. So this is already very expensive for me. And I wouldn't work without one of these on the back, so I felt morally obliged to keep it on as well. I was going to say, ungrateful bastard. Anyway, going to get him up to speed on basically what the cadence is going to be, map that into the calendar, going to run through the basics of Final Cut Pro and just get laptop set up, logins, outlook, so that we're all signed off on Notion and all that synchronicity, good stuff, etc. Okay, so 12.30 is up. I'm about to order some lunch, but we've got through a fair amount there. He's picked it up quite quickly, which is nice, but not all that surprising, as it's quite manual. It's just a case of understanding what you need to do, then practicing, and then going from there, really. So let's see how things move forward. We've got a clear plan, which is exciting. And ultimately, I am paying him an old, unused kit, so it is very cost-effective for me at this point. So going to get some lunch on board, and then we're going to run through final login, getting him up to speed on Canva, getting him understanding a few things in terms of how we can really look at the analytics and data moving forwards, but ultimately give him all the information he needs so he doesn't need to ask me many questions. It's the whole reason I'm outsourcing this, so I don't need to worry about it. Am I not correct? Delegation is key. I have a 12 o'clock call with the corporate that I am doing four talks across four sites tail end of the year with as well, so scheduling that in and looking at specific focus points, so that is all squared away now. Just the case of getting the presentations done, really refining the content, and then liaising with the sort of points of contact between now and then to make sure everything's running smoothly, the dates are in the diary, and everything is squared away. So I'd say that's lunch. That'll do. That 
was excellent. So Jamie is going to head off for an hour or so to meet his missus for a second lunch, perhaps. It wouldn't be out of character for him, to be perfectly honest. But she's working from home, so they're going to link up. I'm going to use the next hour to crack on with some WhatsApps for Omnia athletes, some emails, check-ins, adjusting things in training peaks if anyone needs it, etc., etc., and just check in with everybody midweek, basically, see how things are going. So beyond that, we're going to then spend the next hour and 15 before my train home, just final bits, making sure Jamie's up to speed with the cadence of what we want to get done over the next six months, map that out, put it in our Outlook calendar so we know what's being done when. I don't need to check it. It can just happen without me really worrying about it. That is the aim for this, is I can sort of offset it entirely, leave him to figure out the details. Obviously, I'll be there to help where possible, but hopefully just have it run itself as I'm spread very thinly at the moment across multiple projects commercially, as well as very, very high training volume for the Double Brutal, and it's weighing me down. So I'm trying to delegate, trying to offset, trying to outsource where I can, and this is one element, one part of a much bigger process of trying to do so. So I'm going to crack on with that. He's going to head for second lunch, second breakfast, Pippin. What about second breakfast? And see you very soon. No! God, please, no! Okay, so a rather significant spanner in the works. I am now walking to the station having rapidly reviewed the options that I have. So I'm trying to get to the station for a 19 minutes to three train. Quarter past now, Jamie left a few of his things at the coffee shop. So he is now driving back to meet me at the station so I can hand this stuff back to him and then we can, I'll send over a document with the final bits that we didn't cover off, but add a little bit of spice to an already spicy day as I had chilli on my avocado on toast, but nonetheless, best laid plans of mice and men and all that. So obviously that schedule I laid out this morning on the train is completely irrelevant now, so we will adapt, we will improvise and we will overcome. That is a variation on the Bear Grylls meme, so I feel a bit weird having got it wrong, but nonetheless, let's say it's a new phrase entirely. The station's just up ahead, so I'm going to make it, but it's whether Jamie makes it on time or not is the big question now. Fun and games. Update. The first question when I spoke to the LN ER employee was, can you travel tomorrow? So that doesn't bode well. Every train north and south is cancelled as lines have come down between Grantham and Lincoln. So I am in Newcastle. It is half past two. I'm not quite sure what to do at this stage. Erin's looking at routes to come get me. I've got some hire car options on the go. I know a few people in Newcastle I could stay with, but I'd rather not do that, to be honest. Especially as my car is in a multi-story that's £22 a day. going on. Not many answers. Good thing I'm filming a YouTube video, otherwise I'd be significantly more annoyed, because this adds a little bit of drama to the narrative, doesn't it? The joys. The joys. Update. There is one train that is making it through to head on to Edinburgh, and it looks like I'm just in time for it, so once this one is out of the way, that's coming
again back where it all started this morning at just coming up to 5 p.m so didn't film anything on the train it was quite busy in the carriage and just wanted to crack on get my head down with what i could given the disruption today because do you remember that guy this morning not far from this very spot that said today needs to run like clockwork that hasn't quite happened but i think we're on track so i'm going to grab my bike kit from the car now head upstairs to the gym get changed come back down drive to Arthur's seat get my bike out the back of the truck and then do some laps with Arthur's seat so why don't I change into my bike kit in three two one and we have arrived at Arthur's seat it is off in that direction I'm going to get my bike out of here and I'm going to do several laps it is 25 past five not much to sort I realize I hadn't filled up my water bottle in the gym so I've had to stop and get two bottles of water through a Costa drive through which felt weird but they didn't seem to show any visible discomfort like I did, so all is well. I'm on the road bike today, so just gonna take it sort of zone two, maybe pushing into zone three as we're midweek and see how it feels. I normally really enjoy laps around here. I haven't actually done any since the Countman, so fingers crossed there aren't too many cars in the way, no learner drivers like when I filmed the tri bike versus road bike video. Well, let's have some fun. This beat is sick. I wanna take a ride on your Cervelo stick with wheels and the drive train and stuff. Scottish indeed. Okay, je suis fini, job done, data on the screen for you just here. 32k according to my Wahoo, 31.96k according to Strava, so I think we can all agree. Cheers Strava, thank you very much. Just under 500 meters again, 1 hour 20 moving time, 24.3 kilometers an hour, average power 214, average weighted power 256. I did feel heavy on the hills today, that is the nature of being hybrid and heavier than an average cyclist, but it was annoying getting dropped so hard on the hills when I was working hard, although I did murk everybody on downhills and flats, so swings and roundabouts, but still, just goes to show how much of a difference it makes with power to weight ratio. So, I'm probably hearing my voice, I need my inhaler. Contact lens coming out of the car this morning, needing my inhaler now, probably gonna have an allergic reaction to peanuts this evening. That is the way my life goes. Anyway, gonna get this back in the car, gonna head home, should take me 25 or 30 minutes, and then once I am home, I will update you on what the rest of the evening entails. Goodbye. I am home, I have showered, I have changed, and I have made myself dinner. Two bagel thins with chicken sausages, ketchup, mayo, and some salad leaves, plus some very close to its use by date coleslaw, apparently. So much so, I've put it in a bowl because it's become a little bit runny, having absorbed vegetable juices into the mayo which is not all that delicious to be honest but nonetheless i don't want soggy bagels is the bottom line here i'm gonna eat that i'm gonna zone into what erin's watching for 15 minutes or so dream home makeover she says it's highly recommended then i'm gonna go upstairs box a few more things off and i will catch up with you there to debrief the day and run you through what i'm gonna crack on with before bedtime and then i'm gonna put this camera away because quite frankly at this point i'm a bit sick of it i'm gonna have my dinner and see you very soon Good evening. So it is bang on 9pm and I'm going to crack on with about half an hour, 45 minutes worth of work. First of all, I'm going to finish that document off that I mentioned before for Jamie so he's clear on what he needs to do step by step. Here's how you approach things and just leave him to sort of figure it out as he goes. Obviously I'm here to help if needed but the more I can offset the better I will feel. 
So boxing that off today will be good because it just means I can take it off and put it to bed. Secondly, some last bits of prep ahead of the weekend for the event that I'm doing with Glenn Eagles and Chris Hoy. So just last bits of prep for the interviewing role that I'm taking there. Thirdly, I am just going to get back to a few people on my work phone as it died whilst I was on the train as the plug that I was charging. My phone on didn't actually work and I let my phone die unwittingly. Nonetheless, I'm going to crack on so not to eat into too much more of my evening. But one more thing I would like to note before I go is that I will be having a serving of pre-sleep by Human24. That was disappointing. Let's try it again. Better. So, if the thought of me missing my train didn't make you uncomfortable, this certainly will. That is four pills, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. Do it for the vine and regret it. Anyway, I have a serving of pre-sleep every night before bed and it really, really does improve my quality of sleep overall. Now that I've been regularly wearing Whoop as well, the data is really reinforcing it, which is great to know. So if you would like to save yourself 10% off Human24, use the code in the description. And if you'd like your first month free of Whoop, then use the link in the description down below, both of which do me and the channel a solid. So I would really appreciate it if you do get involved and you'll be trying some exciting products for yourself anyway. So win-win, win-win-win-win-win, okay? Deal, nice. Anyway, debrief on the day, pretty full on, but pretty standard insight into what day-to-day -day life is looking like at the moment. I'm having to pack a lot in work-wise. That was quite an admin heavy day. Obviously being able to just boost down to Newcastle and crack on there was great, but I did have to time block and front load a lot of meetings and calls to either side of today so that I could do that, which means the rest of the week is fairly chaotic, but all good things. Big training weekend to follow as well. So I need to make sure that I'm on top of admin and prep and clean bike clothes and all of that before that. But that is how life is looking at the moment. So any questions do drop them in the comments down below. Please do make sure to like the video if you haven't yet already. Do comment with your thoughts, feelings, insights, suggestions, or whatever else you please. And I think what I'm going to do next time is go through a bit more detail on how I'm sort of feeling psychologically at the moment, because I'm kind of wrestling with this ongoing battle of struggling to switch off my mind from what's next. I mean, this is probably a great example right now. It's gone 9 p.m. and I'm trying to box things off for my peace of mind before bed, when in reality I should probably just be unwinding. But there's a lot of things on at the moment. I'm, I'm looking to September the double brutal to get that out of the way and then have a more relaxed tail end to the year, then all focus towards the Norseman next year. So this feels like a busy period for me. But psychologically, there's been a few times recently where I've had to check myself on my inability to sort of switch my brain off from thinking about, okay, what should I be doing? What can I do next? How can I improve this? How can I improve that? And growth mindset, the sort of very popular podcast term, is a great thing. But I am reflecting on how I can better manage my relationship with it across all areas of my life at the moment. So do keep an eye out for a video that I'll probably do on that in the near future. If that sounds like something you resonate with, then do make sure that you hit subscribe so that you can tune in. But just some last minute reflections and thoughts from me there. Not gonna reiterate everything I've said. All I'm gonna say is that I hope you've enjoyed today's video and I will see you next time.